Okay, so welcome to the second part in this couple of videos to sending information from a Raspberry Pi to your uh, Amazon device using proactive events. In the first session, we saw how to create the Amazon skill, the Alexa skill, and we called it Intruder Alert. And we saw that how I actually added a, a second language and that we modified the JSON skill to add the events of publications to our to and from our skill. So what we now need, need to do now in, in the Raspberry Pi side of things to, to send the message, what we do is we send a post request to the Amazon servers. That's in two parts. Firstly, we uh, obtain an access token from the Amazon servers, and then we use that token to send a notification. So what we need to do that is when we, to request the token, we need our client ID and our client secret, which we get from our Amazon skill. As I said, the Double Labs video uses the postman to do that. So it's all explained in the documentations from Amazon here about what you need to do firstly for the obtain the access token and then call in the, the actual API. So what we'll do is we need to write some code now, which will send that post request. So the first thing we'll do is we need to get the client ID and the client secret. I put those in a separate credential.py code and that, that's access from the code that gets the access token. So first of all, I'll show you how to do that. You go to your developer console, go to the skill, look for models and permissions. So we go back to our skill, we look for models, and we look for permissions. And then if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you'll see here is your Amazon client ID and your Amazon secret. So I'll just pause while I copy those and paste those into credential.py. Okay, so I've uh, copied the uh, client ID and this client secret into a file on my Raspberry Pi. I should explain how I actually do that. Uh, use VNC to connect to my Raspberry Pi. Uh, this is just uh, my local network, and um, I've got in, I've just got a folder called notifications in here. I've got the credential.py. I've got uh, this program, which is just, just collects the token, and a program called notifications, which actually gets the token and then uses that token to send the notification. So we'll just look at the getting the token first of all in this post for token program that I've got. So the way that works, I'm going to scroll down here, is it sends a header post post request with a header and a body. In this case the parameters in the body are a grant type, so we're asking for credentials, um, sends an Alexa proactive event and you send your client ID and your client secret. So uh, yeah this is the code I've got here Again, this is all available to you. So the main code just calls the function get access token and prints the token. And then the code that actually gets the token sets up the parameters, sets up the headers, and does a request.post to the token URI. Well, the token URI is the first one we send to is this API Amazon.com authorization 02 token, which you may have seen if you've ever done any login with Amazon 
coding. Um, I have to import some requests here, and I import credential because that's got the that's the credential.py file that I've got, which holds the credentials. Pick up the credentials from that file, put those in with the parameters. And we send this post request. We get a response. That response, in fact, here I print out the whole uh, status code uh, the, and the response.txt. And within that, then I pass back just the access token that we get from the response. So um, come, 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 copy and paste that code. Oh, we'll look at the output. We'll run that now then. So I've copied the client ID and the client secret. So hopefully we should just be able to run the Python code and I'll call it post for the token one. I think that's the only one I've got. Oh, sorry. That was a few. Type it and we'll send a request for a token and it's done. Um, the thing, the important thing to look for is this status response 200 here, which means that you've got it back. So here's the response header when it was sent and so on. This is the whole body that we, we send, this ends there. And we can see that we've got an access token. And this is the access token that we want to save. We've got a scope. We've got a token type of bearer, and it expires in oh, 3,600 3, seconds. So, and then I print out the token. So this is the token that we want. So that's pretty straightforward, really. Once you know what you're doing, it's easy. Um, so the response we get back is in this JSON format, access token, scope token expires. So now all we need to do is to use that token that we've got to send a notification. Now, when we send the notification, we need in development, we send it to this eight URI with the stages development added to the end of it. This is mentioned again in the Alexa documentation. It might be different from you if you're not in, Euro in Europe. So this time the header, we're going to send a content type and we're going to say authorization and the bearer and the access token. Now the body contains the event or events that we want to send. And these can be unicast to just one person, in which case you need to go and get uh, the use that you want and make sure that it's subscribed for and that you've recorded and kept a record of in your uh, say database somewhere when they did the original assigned to the notification or we can just send a multicast which would send to everybody that's got a uh, subscribed to your notifications so we need to get a timestamp, we need a unique reference ID, we need an expiry time, and we need an event payload. We'll look at that in a minute. And we can have some localized attributes, and here's the relevant audience that we're sending it to. Again, this is all described up here in these proactive events up here, and calling the proactive events API. So the, remember that's what I said about the stage of development. This is the one we want for Europe. This is the one for the North America. And this is if you're in the Far East. OK, um, they're different when you go into production. So just make sure that if you do go into production with this, you change your APIs, your, your URIs. So let's take a look now then at what we're going to actually send. We've seen this timestamp reference ID expiry time. Now the event that we're going to send is an Amazon message alert activated and the payload we're going to send is a status and a freshness and a message group and a message. You can say how many messages you've got. Uh, 
again this is all in somewhere here somewhere in one of the uh, Amazon documentation what you can and can't include so uh, the whole code then is combined so here's the whole code what we're going to do is the main code will call the request for a token and then send the notification. So here's the token at URI, here's the Alexa URI, this is where we get the access token. That returns the access token. So this is the main code now. It gets the access token, gets the action, runs this function, then sets up some headers, sets up our parameters that we need for the sending the notification. And then down here actually does a second post to the Alexa URI with the headers and the parameters that we set up in the code here, which is the same as we just, just requested. So if we go back to, sorry, go back to my uh, Raspberry Pi, we can now see that I can just run Python 3. And at this stage, I'll just turn my Alexa on. Notification. And that's most probably going to send a notification to all of the devices that we've got in our house. Oh, well. I've not got Alexa. My Alexa hasn't responded. But I can say, Alexa, tell me my notifications. One new notification. And you can't see that. Sure you? Alert. you have one new unread message from John's Python program. And so it sent the uh, notification to our machine. So obviously I can now attach that to uh, some extra code that detects the intruder. But uh, the other thing we can do before we just leave this is just to go back to the cloud watch management again, go back to the logs, uh, intruder alert. Sorry, go back to the log group. Intruder alert. Refresh it. <laughs> hmm. So the same one. Well, I don't know why I didn't get those. It's not there in the intruder alerts. Maybe it's not come through the system yet. But that's all. So you now know how to send a notification from your Raspberry Pi to your Alexa device. I hope you found that useful. Thanks for watching.